Dun, 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 dun. We are back, people. Well, webinar. We got the well ring. Did you get your hair did, Logan? Your hair looks cut under there. Uh, I mean, it's like. Hey, oh, you still got the flow. You still got, got the, the flow. flow. Uh, and then Sa Sondra is putting people to shame with his hair game. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. As always, uh, super fun to have everybody on Wednesday. We have a super special guest, uh, Sean. Sean Brandt, welcome to the Whale Webinar, brother. Uh, hey, Lucky. Hey, everyone. Is, is Lucky Panda really your name, or is that a uh, AI thing? But uh, my man, Richard. What's up, Rich? <coughs> I still owe you um, uh, Instagram messages, Rich. I promise. I was, I, I'm flying <laughs> home today, but I will send those today. Um, so we, we're going to do something pretty cool. We're going to actually have Logan kind of give us some quick product updates, and then Sean is going to go through some kind of live CRO stuff, and then we'll have Sean kind of give a little skinny. But the whole impetus is uh, Sean runs a really amazing company called Audit, really amazing, incredible um, CRO. And we decided, hey, why don't we partner up with you? And so if you buy a Pixel for the whole month of December, anybody – that buys a pixel, a new store, new pixel, boom, you're automatically entered into a raffle to win a 10 pack win from audit. Look at that. People having people. You get it for free, you'll get it on their calendar, and then you'll have an incredible MarTech stack, and then you'll have an awesome, awesome site that's totally optimized to make you all the monies. But before we get into that, Logan, you have any cool product updates for us? The, the company meeting kind of blew me away. Is there anything you can share on stuff you've been working on? Do I ever? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So for everyone who's listening, you get a sneak peek uh, or, li or a sneak uh, listen in. So uh, next week, we're going to be launching uh, this new feature we've been really excited about and working on under the radar a bit. Um, pretty much automated rules for Facebook, calling it the rules engine. Um, some of our um, customers have been asking for this probably since the beginning of time. Uh, pretty much since we launched the Pixel, which would have been last December, November. So what's really cool about this is that I think we might be the first uh, kind of app or platform to launch automated rules with uh, first party data or zero party data in this case. So like uh, the server side Pixel data is going to be available to query against for your rules. Um, and I don't think anyone else has had that in the past that I'm aware of. So what's really cool is... Um, you're going to be able to kind of first automate all of the mundane tasks you would typically do within your Facebook ad account. Um, so saving time is, is key number one. Number two is hopefully saving you money and making you money. Um, speaking with a, a group of our alpha users with this, um, I will say one of the coolest pieces of feedback I got last night was we have a user who lives in Australia. That, mm -hmm. that customer uh, runs a store based in the U.S. and Canada. He was waking up every two hours in the middle of the night to update his ads and check on them just to ensure that while he's sleeping, uh, his, his ads are running effectively in the U.S., right? So right. he could essentially set up a rule that says, hey, if this ad is operating under my desired ROAS, go ahead and turn that off. Um, you can do it by times of day. Um, you can set up like, I want to run this rule um, every 15 minutes. I want to run it every hour, every seven days. Um, and That's we have a group so of conditions cool. there uh, with metrics you can choose from that are available in the Pixel dashboard. So uh, be on the lookout for this. Um, we're shooting for next week's launch. Uh, super excited to get it out in the wild and get people's feedback and get some rules um, crushing for people. Amazing. What an incredible update. I, I'm really excited. And I'm like you said, I'm pretty sure we're the first people to offer rules based on first party data, correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's some, there's some apps out there that offer some integrations, um, but they're not offering the pixel table, like a place where you can um, kind of manage your ads all in one yep. place, report on them, manage them. Um, so if anyone hasn't noticed already, you can actually toggle campaigns, ad sets and ads um, on and off from within the UI. Um, if you don't have access to that yet, just chat with our team and they'll give you access. Uh, so that way you can do that today. Um, so if something's not working well, you don't have to go to Facebook ads manager to change it. Just update that directly in triple well. And then by next week, you'll be able to set up an automated rule that says, um, whatever you want, whatever, whatever condition you'd like, you can set up as many rules as you want. Um, and it's free for pixel customers. So, uh, that's, that's a huge win. I think as well, every other service costs could, could be thousands of dollars to use. Christmas come early folks. Um, okay. Thank you for that incredible update, Logan. 
Uh, Sean, there is an inordinate amount of demand for you. So I think we're just going to jump in. I will share <laughs> my screen. And then um, I didn't realize there, there was this much. So let's, I'll start, I'll share my screen and then we can kind of walk through together and maybe we can cap it at like, what, like one to three minutes kind of big takeaways or what's the better, you're the, you're the, I'm just a witness in your yeah, world. I, so what do you think the best way to do this is? I normally ra end up rambling a little bit because I go too deep and then everyone gets like 10 minutes and no one, I don't get, I only get through like five or six. So maybe what we'll do is like, I'll limit it to kind of, two to three pieces of feedback for each one whether or not it's the game-changing feedback or something i just initially see i can't promise because i've never seen these sites before but we'll we'll get through as many as we can um and i think probably the best way is to just start at the top um amazing but i'm open to whatever if you want to do a little game with it Raba, it's up to you but i'm fine to just kind of start at the top and go yeah absolutely so austin was the first to jump on it pro edu um, okay, cool. Nice. So I would do, just, how about this? We, me, Logan and, uh, Sonder will kind of just take a quick swag at this to just to look at the site, see what it's about. And then yeah. I'll give you some time to get your thoughts together and then you can take over. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. So I think right off the bat, I like the above the fold. I know what's going on. I don't know what it sells yet. So that would be something that I don't know what the products are, but I do like the, the deal is very clear. There's some social proof down there. Amazing. Okay, cool. These are beautiful. This is strong. Um, Sonder, Logan, what do you guys, nice little pop-up. What do you guys think? I suppose I'm assuming it's like masterclass. <clears throat> um, but okay, you know, yeah, I'm sure courses. the people are coming through paid media, yeah. but I suppose if this was shared with me or I found it organically, um, I might be a bit confused of like what it is I'm buying. Am I buying a one-on-one -on -one with this person? Am I taking a course? Is it so that, that may, that's a little ambiguous right now. Um, but I do like the social proof. Um, of course, like what, what was the offer at the top? Like 95% off or something crazy. Um, yeah. So like aggressive. that makes me excited just to check it out um, and at least Agreed, see what yeah. I can get at that deep, steep of a discount. Um, and I like the big bold buttons there. Um, yep. I'm not sure if unlimited, I mean, Sean will probably get into this, but I'm not sure if I would even click on unlimited access right away. If I don't even know like the difference what between one item, like a one-off versus like, am I buying a subscription or, or what that is? But, yeah. uh, yeah. anyway, I like the site. It looks pretty. I, yeah. Strong. Yeah. Feedback. I think Sean. Sean. Yeah. I think the, you guys all hit on some good stuff there. I think the main thing to consider whenever you're looking at a homepage is one, where's the traffic coming from, right? Like, are they coming in cold and they're just kind of clicking on pro edu? They don't know what pro edu means. They don't know what the, they don't have no clue. Or are they coming in from an ad that told them exactly what you do? Right. And that funnel and where the traffic's coming from is really important because we're always picking apart websites and this header, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense from a brand standpoint because it doesn't tell me what you do in all of, you know, it, it does, it's not a super clear picture. But, you know, maybe, um, maybe Austin's company is sending traffic from an ad that's like, here's exactly what we do, go shop, right? And then when they land here, great, we're just trying to give them quick access to some actions. In general, though, as your homepage is kind of like your facade of the building, like, you need to give them some idea of what's happening. So I think some small copy can definitely be added here to just say, hey, here's what we sell. A little further down the page, there's a section that says all access and it says, you know, level up with 4,000 plus photography related courses. That to me, that single line is everything you need in that header, right? It tells me how many courses you have, which is just immediately a little bit of a trust builder because it's like, okay, well, they've curated 4,000 of these things. They must know in some capacity what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. and it also, it also just instantly draws a relation to that all access button, right? It's like, I can shop these things individually or I can get all 4,000. All of a sudden it's a much more compelling offer. The main thing to always consider when you're looking at, um, conversion and copy and what you're communicating is that regardless of how compelling the product is, regardless of what ad they came from and how communicative that was, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at your clarity or your what hot jar, whatever it is from a from a tool standpoint, doesn't matter how nice your site is, how big your brand is, there's just a clear gradient pattern of 
everyone sees the first piece and it just slowly gets lower as you get down the page, right? By the time you're at section right. three, four, 40% of your 100,000 users a month are seeing that. So you're like 40%, sorry. So mm-hmm. it's, it doesn't matter how good your brand is. If you don't start communicating what you do super clear to lower in the page, you're just losing people every second because a lot of them are just leaving the second they see that first fold. Um, so I think that's the main thing here um, with this site is just, even though there's this amazing offer, 95% is insane, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, it just needs to be more clear what's being sold. And I think that one line further down the page sums it up really well, tells me what it's photography courses um, and, and tells me how many there is. I mean, that's the, I think that's the main piece of advice I would have is just pull that up there, communicate much more clear. Hey, Sean, I, I got to, uh, oh, sorry, Robbie. Oh, go ahead, love you. No, no, I, no, I, just have, I just had this question because I, uh, for context, I was I was working in marketing for an e-commerce store before this, uh, for my role at Triple Whale. So it's kind of close to the heart. But what I'm curious from your point of view that I think all of our listeners and viewers will take out of this, um, your advice, the fact that they have one-off, um, like one one-off products plus this subscription, I'm curious. Um, do you think it, it it's it would benefit them to put that pro plan? Uh, offer at the checkout or in the cart slide out so that if someone's buying a one-off instead of buying the one-off they may convert on the full unlimited access plan or does that take away from the actual conversion and divert them somewhere else that they could lose the purchase altogether it's a really good question i think the the all my only hesitance in upselling it is it's kind of like if you think of it if we take in a similar compet like a competitive market let's say of actual adobe as a business right like adobe yeah. creative suite where adobe has let's say i don't i haven't used it in five years but let's say they have 15 products right there's a really good chance that if i'm buying adobe illustrator i probably need acrobat or photoshop right there's there's this insane correlation and there's not like ten thousand different options of thing of products collected together that i could make work for me. Whereas in this case, you're going from one to accessing 4,000. It, as much as it's a great upsell and it's like one, I think one product is, let's see here between 50 and hundred, it looks like, or all 4,000 for 200. Like, obviously that's an insane deal, but these, to get someone to visualize how they're going to act, use 4,000 plans versus like in the Adobe example, it's like, Oh yeah. The other one of 15 things that I think I might need. Sure. It's, it's just kind of a stretch, but I, to your, to your point, like it's worth definitely worth the test because you're upping AOV by, in this case, four, two to four X, um, and whether or not they need 4,000, I mean, it's an insane deal. So it, it'll probably work. Hmm. Amazing. I'm going to kind of push us along, uh, because yeah, yeah. we are a little bit long in the tooth on these, but Austin, I hope that's helpful. I think the, the biggest takeaway here is you have an incredible offer. And that you probably need to get that offer a little bit. If you are driving traffic to your homepage, um, you probably want to get that offer a little bit more clear. And I would even play around with some of those, um, like that 95% off. You might even be able to do a dollar sign instead of 95% because there is a certain aspect of like, it almost feels too good to be true. So if it was like, hey, instead of 100 bucks, it's 10 bucks or whatever. Like that might be an easier on ramp as well, because this seems like a bit of a premium product and you don't want to devalue it by discounting it so deeply or or portraying the discount so deeply. But anyways, okay. Sorry. One last, one last very small thing. Sorry. Just when we're talking, whenever you guys are marketing between unlimited access versus lifetime access, there's a very big difference there. And especially in a scenario like this, unlimited access means I unlock all these products Lifetime access means I unlock all these products and any more that you're releasing. And mm-hmm. I think that needs to be made a little more clear here. I don't know if you're releasing 10 a day, 100 a month, whatever it is of new products. And if this unlimited access gains those, that's a huge selling feature to help you drive more people to that thing, that unlimited access button. I don't know if that's the case. I'm just bringing it up. Yeah, good thought. Amazing. Cool. Okay, great. We have the next one. We are, this is Dennis Gern. Petroni DE. So this is a German site. So this is going to be a little challenging, but I'm actually going to put us on a clock this time. Um, so yep. I'm going to have three minutes. Um, Sandra, why don't you kind of get your two cents in here while Sean puts his thoughts together? 
Is that is that because I have a German last name? <laughs> yeah, of course, I'm totally profiling. <laughs> All right, scroll. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so this is so like uh, awesome <laughs> in the sense like we can't even read the language, and I instantly know what the products are. So that is obviously right off the bat a great step. These are fantastic. Yeah. Exactly. I I think so. Go up to the top again, Rabba. <clears throat> Do you ship to probably, the US? <laughs> probably the, the one thing I would do here where you can instill some emotion is if you were to show the person with their dog and then showing the dog in the picture. So, so that's because the people who are buying your products here obviously love their animals. So if you could instill like that type of, yeah, just those, those feelings, that emotion, I think it just gets to the, the point even quicker. Yeah, I think Love you it. could even, Sean, you could even, minutes. yeah, like that's a great point. And I think obviously the dogs aren't buying the, the product of human is. So I think that's a great point. And it could be as simple as just showing one of these hanging on a wall in a living room and the owners with the dog. You know what I mean? Like it's Love kind that. of a, that, that full circle. I think that could be really powerful there. Um, I think right at the very top, the, the main thing I want to see more of is, um, just some form of like, how many of these have you sold? How many, uh, you know, it says choose costume. Is there five costumes, 10 costumes, a thousand costumes? I know you get into it further down the page, but overall that Hold header on. is a little- You read German or did you translate that? I translated, sorry. Okay, okay. I was like, this guy. <laughs> okay, yeah. That, that's that's um, amazing. Uh, one more minute. Yeah, so I, I would just pull something up there just to- the, the social proof in this case isn't going to be like to Rob's point, we can't read this language and we understand exactly what it is and we see the value. Right. So in, in situations like this, social proof becomes less and less necessary because it's a well-priced product. It's easy to understand. There's an emotional connection. The need for social proof is a little bit lower, but I do think if you want someone to click that button, right, you're assuming that they enjoy that first image, right. Of the guy in the, or the guy, the dog in the, you know, whatever it is, royalty garb kind of thing, you know, just simply saying choose from a hundred costumes um, could be that trigger to push them through to that next step. Right. Um, so that's, that's the main thing I would update here is just communicate a little bit more about how many costumes they have. Amazing. Look at that with five seconds to spare. You guys are we're running a tight ship here. Amazing. Okay, Whoever runs um, the score, please tell me if you can ship to the U.S. for fairly cheap. I would love this. This is great. Yeah, these are amazing. Yeah, Dennis, uh, if you can, reach out to us. Uh, and then also, if you want some swag, thank you for participating. And uh, Robert Tripwell, just send me your email, your size, and then uh, I believe you're probably going to be outside the U.S., so I will need your uh, email size and what was that thing I need? Address. Duh. Okay. Ah, oh, my man, Rich. Let's go. So this is near and dear to my heart. These are what make up my fancy, oh, where's my screen? This makes up my fancy, fancy, if anybody's been to the trip whale office, these are on display and holding Just on. Look, have look like see, a, oh, there we go. Yeah, I have a little car in my office. It's amazing. These are just, they're, they're gorgeous. Um, they are absolutely top tier. This is a redesign, Rich, right? This looks like a redesign to me. Um, okay. Uh, Logan, you get a minute and then Sean will bring you on at the, uh, one minute mark. Go ahead, Logan. Cool. All right. Let's start scrolling and then I'll give some thoughts. Best sellers. Best collaborations. These are sick, by the way. Acrylic frames. Neat. There's some testimonials. Real life. Oh, that's dope with the wallet. <clears throat> yeah. Well, see, I'm also listening to your reaction too. So, like, um, all, all my it's all my opinion here, right? Subjective. But at the top, like, although I really appreciate the fact that it's very straightforward about what it is. This is what we do. We do mm -hmm. premium acrylic displays for the modern collector. I'm not sure the picture does it for me. Like, I've actually mm -hmm. seen yours in your office, and that was like a bit more impressive, like to see it in real life. So I'm not sure if I, what I would do here exactly, but I might show maybe a more like broad image that shows how this is set up and it could be in a really dope office or, 
or like one of their premium customers, like where, how they set it up or something. But um, I'm not sure I got the wow factor considering I've seen yours and it wowed me when I saw yours. Right. So um, that's pretty cool. And then I think uh, I'm not sure from the conversion rate optimization point, if this would work or not, I'd have to test it. But I do think in this scenario um, I'm interested. I think if you're a collector, you like seeing what other collections look like. I would love to see the, the Instagram photos from other folks who bought this more immediately. Um, and I know well, you want to start driving to the product, um, but maybe these tiles could somehow be linked to products too, right? So it's like showing off the, the UGC, but like get this style, get this version. And so like people are like, oh, I dig that. I've got those same new balances. Like I'll take that and just like start shopping immediately. But um, mm-hmm. those are my thoughts. Okay, okay also, all- I'm going to give you actually two minutes because Logan went long. So go ahead, Sean. All right. All good. Um, those are all great points, Logan. Um, I agree with them all. I think two main things that I want to see uh, here that I think will actually really increase uh, your conversion rate. The first is to Logan's point. I think that header image, I love how clean and commu- like clear the headline is and that like the image is really simple. Um, what could be really powerful here is just a simple GIF of like a stack Ooh. being made um, in different shapes. I think that could be really um, helpful up here. But the main thing that I think is missed on this homepage is, and, and you know, I, I'm not a sneaker head, but like my friends of mine run a company called Soul Savvy, which is just a community of sneaker heads. Um, so I'm familiar and I've done a lot of consulting with them and I, and I understand the culture. You know, it, Raba can attest to this, like sneaker heads are addicts. Like you, mm-hmm. there's, it's not a one shoe thing right? Like, unless there's like, I get one of these for my dad because he saved his shoes from some race he ran when he was a kid and you're just playing one shoe or something like that's maybe an edge case, but most of these sneaker heads, it's boxes and boxes and boxes of shoes. It's not one, it's not two, it's fucking boxes of them. So the yep. main thing I think that's getting missed here is bundling. Like I should be able to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, and discount every single time, even if it's a little bit, I want to see like if someone's buying one, like this is the perfect customer to be upselling as many as possible because you know, they have more than one pair they want to display. So I think the main thing that needs to be communicated more clearly at every section of this site is what do I get when I keep adding more? I love that. And man, you are on it, Sean fucking pro bro. Two seconds under. (laughs) Um, yeah, I think that's really great feedback. And Rich, to be fair, man, you guys have just such beautiful collections and there's just so much meat on the bone that I do like the cleanliness of it. Like the, it's so clean cut, but I think one, the bundling is brilliant, but also to, to uh, Sean's point as well, the, the ability to really bring people into that attic mentality of like seeing what other people's grails kind of look like, what other setups look like. I think that would go a really long way here because when you see the products, they are so stunning. And I think this is one of those cases of almost kind of what we touched on with the dog portraits where you want to see it in like real life, like how it actually manifests versus this like kind of clean, almost sterile look, which is aesthetically pleasing, but um, fantastic stuff, Sean. Fantastic stuff. Um, that's a good point. Somebody put some mobile stuff in here. Um, we're not going to do mobile just for the sake of time, but maybe we'll bring you back on, Sean, and we can do some mobile ops as well. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, to your point, Kenny. Um, there's there's probably a ton of UX stuff on mobile we could do. I I'm trying to focus as much as I can on copy and communication stuff, just because I don't want to comment too much on the desktop experience. Because for a lot of brands, it's not as relevant, obviously, but good point. Amazing. Awesome, Rich. Thank you for tossing it in there. Okay, where are we next? We have, uh, I think, Matt, no, Colin. Oh, my gosh, there's so many amazing people. Everybody wants Sean. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, amazing. Oh, this is a PDP we're going to. Hold on, hold your horses. Um, I believe you are up, Sandy. Oh, another German site as well. Amazing. Uh, right. Let me do only give the German sites to Sandra. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. I need to share. I just things. I just met with Till right before this and said he should join this because I don't know much oh, about wow, cool. Subaru, so maybe I shouldn't comment on this. But 
we'll go. Oh, okay. So, you, okay. Well, we're going to give all three minutes then, Sean. Sean, you're up. This is a, that's a right. cool product. This is a cool product. Um, my, my very first comment is, and because it looks so unique and the images do a really good job of showing the product at certain angles. But I think the main question I have when I first land on here is like, what does it look like as I move across it? And they, you have a video, I think it's the second, two, three, four. The video is kind of tucked away in like image seven. Yeah. Um, and so one thing that we do with a lot of our customers is we just, we recommend implementing a play button that just overlays on the entire gallery. So you can kind of just hit play at any time and see how the product functions. Um, that's the first thing I see is just like, I want to know what happens immediately when you go across it, because it's probably the most compelling part of the product. Um, and it's not a static product, right? Like it really is more interesting in rude. movement. So you, you might even yeah. want to lead with that as a gift instead of, I was going to say, yeah, this is so grabby, right? Like it, it encapsulates everything. It's a pretty short video. So the gift shouldn't be this incredibly massive file. There's not yeah. too many colors in it. So the gift shouldn't blow up. Um, that's incredible. Okay. You one still other, have a buck 30. What else you got? One other thing, a super small thing, but like, I always, I always beat this to death on our Twitter, but like never make customers do math is something I'm always saying. So like 245 marked down from 400. Yes. The math is easy. Yes. They know it's a big discount, but just like hit them in the face, like 40% off or save $150, whatever, or euros. Like just hit them in the face. Don't make them think about it. Every time you make them think, do math, whatever, it's just more time on site, more time on site where they're not hitting add to cart is lower conversion. Um, so just as often as you can, whenever you're changing something like a price knockdown, just hit them in the face with a tag, like a label that says exactly what they're saving. Um, I know you have a lot of images in here, but I would add one um, to show the different sizes on a wall. Um, even as a designer, I, I, I used to design spaces as well. And I have a pretty good understanding of, you know, 50 centimeters versus 70 centimeters. And even I want to know what they look like on a wall. So I would just add an image that shows, you know, just a couch or a, like a table in a bedroom and then the 50 and the 70 beside each other. Like I want to see in context, what's the size difference, which one is best for my space. You need to help customers visualize that because most people can't. So they're going to go get out a tape measure. They're going to go to their bedroom. They're going to see what they You don't want them to do that. As soon as they leave their computer, your conversion is tanking. So just give them an image to help them pick. And I would put a little link right beside diameter that says, help me pick. Hmm. Heat, straight heat, Sean. And on time again, you are killing it, bro. Incredible. Um, thank you for sharing, Till. That's a really cool product, man. I think there's also uh, one little tidbit that I would also add here is that I'm also kind of like a super nerd in terms of like connections. So there might be something you could do in like some sort of video where it shows you like, hey, Alexa, turn my mirror on or something like that, where you can actually yeah. see the integration in play because that's really cool. This is, this is a really cool product, man. Congrats. Um, okay, Logan, I'm going to give you the first minute of this one. Or you want it, Sandra? You haven't talked in a while. I Sander, Sander, spin Sander, the wheel, Sander. Sander. Do it, do it. Oh, amazing. Okay, Sander, you're on the clock. You get a minute, and then we'll give Sean two. Part of your minute includes you're this. You're just spin. a sucker for the, the spin wheel, huh? It's, it does numbers, baby. This is also PDP that we're going to 10% off. Bummer. Okay. Oh, he wanted go to uh, go to the homepage. He wanted homepage feedback. He put it in the homepage. Yep. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay, let me restart this. Give you back thirty seconds. Okay, you're on the clock, brother. Okay. So I know it's medical gear, compression socks, compression something. Whew. All things I like to use. Okay. Um, scroll back up, Rabba. I always Great like to look at the above the fold. So, so good thing I like here is I feel like it's very on brand. 
when you think compression gear, you usually think like old people and things like that. So I feel like you've done a great job of hitting on your target audience. Um, you know, the extreme athlete. So great job on that front. Um, man, I probably an AB test. I would go that I would try, man. I don't know. Cause you do have a lot of lifestyle photos with the product and they are highlighted well in your hero image. I'm just wondering if you carry that theme into your product images right below that, if that gets people to continue the scroll, maybe, maybe a gift style might be a good way to do that, to go back and forth between that. Um, so those, those were some of my just like initial off the cuff, like above the, above the full type of thing. I mean, I guess you could add some social proof could actually be a good segue right before the product. So to Sean's point, like how many have been sold, how many, you know, X amount of athletes are sporting um, the brand, you know, things like that, I think could be a good way to add onto that little hashtag that you have and keep it going that way. Yeah. Amazing. Sean, right, Sean, how important is it to have a button on the, on like the, above the fold, the base, like, I know we have the navigation, but like, how important do you think it would be to conversion rate to have a button that just says shop best sellers or something there? Yeah, I think it, in this case, especially it's super important. Um, I think you communicate exactly what you do really well. Um, that headline could be a little higher, uh, higher, larger. I think that hashtag keep ruling is a, it's a great like social strategy that I'm sure you're using, but in terms of telling people, like if I was to remove that subheading, that headline could be applied to any brand in the world. Right. And that's one thing you always got to try and do when you're writing that, at least the H1, the headline is like, does it tell them, right? Because a lot of people are going to miss that second subheading. It's it's small. There's a lot of visual noise in that image, not in a bad way, but you got to find balance, right? If you're going to have visual noise in that image where it's very complex, the, the type needs to stand out even more, which means probably in this case, it needs to be larger. So yeah, that, that'd be my first piece of advice is keep ruling should be shrunk a bit and your headline should be blown up and there should be just an action. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. Doesn't need to be perfect, but just give them a clear action to just say, Hey, shop our best sellers or shop all again, going back to that first one we did, not everyone scrolls. Sometimes they just land and they're like, I don't get it. Bye. I'll back to Amazon or whatever they're, you know what I mean? People are running around constantly on the internet. Um, the other thing that I, the one thing that I wanted to call out right at the top, um, I'm actually on my end showing on um, mobile. So I'm seeing it both ways, but I think the main thing I would call out on this grid of products is if you look at that grid of eight, I think there's six of them that look kind of like they could be for any body part other than a foot. Yeah. So they're quite similar. And you really do have to read the headlines to know each one aside from the socks. So one thing I would do is create a little bit more clear content hierarchy on these cards. So what I mean by that is when you get to the PDP, it's fine if that product title, even for SEO purposes, is compression knee brace, both knees. But when it's in this case and you're showing it in that grid, just separate out the body part. So like have a little head like above that first one, compression knee, let's say compression and uh, knee brace, both knees. Just have a little tag that says knee and then show the title. So when they're scanning through these, there's a little tag above each or a little like subheading above each that just says the body part and doesn't force them to read the headline of every single product, they can just read one body part. And that brings me back to the next point, which is I would have, you have further down the page that kind of like the skateboarder and you can kind of click their body parts. Interesting piece of functionality. I think it's probably working. I would test it against just a simple grid of buttons that just says knee, shin, elbow, you know, whatever, all the body parts. Um, I think you'll see a higher conversion there as cool as this is. Um, I think you'll see a way higher click through in action there. And then I would also test moving it right to the top um, between your header and your kind of grid of products here. I think as much as those images are helpful, people just want to like, they know what they need help with. And so whatever is easiest to get them to that body part, I feel like is going to get them to the next step in the sales funnel faster. Amazing. Uh, went over that time but you were dropping eight so i didn't want to i didn't want to pull you off the stage um yeah this is great this is cool this is a really cool piece of functionality but i think uh 
nothing really else to add. I think Sean really nailed it. I think there's just some some cognitive load that doesn't necessarily need to be there. And I also think it might just be as simple as like, this is pretty cool where you kind of understand what the thing is. So if you just had the, the lead image here, how the ankle brace is, and you just have that functionality to show what that body part is, that might be a, a quick fix yeah, for totally. uh, what Sean's suggesting. Um, okay, amazing. Thank you for the uh, submission, Brandon. Really appreciate you. Okay, next He's site. And branding. Yeah, really cool, Brandon. Oh, oh man, there's nice. so many here. I feel bad we're not I know. even <laughs> that quarter of them. They, they, I guess they're just going to have to buy an audit. Maybe we can get together and uh, give them a discount code or something. Uh, yeah, okay, this is another PVP. Um, who's up? Are you up, LB? Sure, can try. Okay, uh, time cool. starts now. All right, scroll a bit. This is a PDP or a landing page? Uh, that's a good question. It looks like a PDP because of the slug, but uh, I'm okay. just kind of guessing. Cool. All right. So uh, maybe, Michael, maybe you could give us some uh, insight. Is it a <laughs> PDP or? No, that's great. It's fine. Sure. I'll, I'll keep going. I just okay. wanted to know for context. All right, scroll down just a little bit. Yep. This is cool. That's a good one. Logan, you're burning up your minute. What are you doing over there? Yeah, I'm thinking through it. I, there's a lot of things I like about it. So, I mean, at the top, um, I'm just not sure how important it is to have the massive header and stuff. I wonder if it'd be better to bring things above the fold. Like, uh, my, my question would be like, could we improve conversion rates simply by bringing the add to cart button above the fold? Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but like, that's the thing that comes to mind immediately is that I've got to scroll even to get to the product itself and the price. Um, and I also see that the price is in red, but I'm not sure, like, is it on sale or is it just in red to draw attention? Like, is, is it really 800 and you, you drop the price? Um, I love all the benefit stuff you're doing here. Um, and I like that I can get it really fast. I love that I can get my money back and send it back for free. Maybe that'd be nice if it was like free returns um, as well. That always gets me interested on a big ticket item. Um, so yeah, that's my feedback is like, 45 days risk-free could just be like free returns within 45 days would, would make Love me that. feel more comfortable with spending 500 bucks. Um, but yeah, that's my feedback so far. I'm sure I went over. Amazing. Yeah. Go ahead, Sean. And then just to clarify, Michael did say it's the product page. They drive Google shopping direct to it. Um, what did you test, Michael? You can go in there and then Sean, go ahead. Having, and I'll, having I'll add to cart above the fold, I think. Hmm. Oh, okay. Tracking. Got it. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think there's a few things here, Michael, that's worth testing. I think um, there's there's a lot of info here. So I think the main thing that I would test that I think could work for you, because there's definitely people that are going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm just looking for an infrared sauna blanket. I know what they do. I want to add to cart. Um, and to that, to, like, to, uh, sorry, was it Logan or uh, Sonder talking? Yeah, Logan. Hey, what's up? Logan. Logan. Um, uh, to Logan's point, like there is going to be certain people that are just ready to add to cart, but I, I think you communicate a lot of key traits of the product here. And I think there needs to be a bit of a better hierarchy of like what's most important. So whether it's through customer feedback surveys or your reviews, like I would try and get that, like you've got a list of one, two, three, four, five, you got eight kind of key traits, let's say above the add to cart. So maybe it's not pushing the add to cart up to the top or anything like that. Maybe it's just honing in on like what's the most important kind of three or four i very rarely have customers that are like no matter what the product is that require more than three or four of those and the rest can kind of live further down the page the more yep. complex you make the product feel the harder the purchase decision is right and so as much as it's great that you're communicating these eight benefits it's almost like eh, do i really need this this seems like a lot of work you know what i mean it's like kind of like sign it's that whole seinfeld like mentality of just like <laughs> yep. it's just too much it's just too much work I, this is, there's yep. too much to read here so i think i definitely get the the intention here but i think more just playing with like what's too much what's not enough and just playing with that that kind of number of things that you're pointing out up there the other thing that i'll mention um i'm just going to pop it in here and i think this is going to work that this link will allow you to show raba if you click that yep you want me to share this tab if you don't mind. No, no, so no. 
The other thing I would test is it's great to test a green um, add to cart button. But as you can kind of see here out of 10 or 15, I think this rating is the color contrast of white on that green is 1.76. So on people with low brightness devices, which is everyone on the planet because everyone's lazy and doesn't charge their devices. So their brightness is down. <laughs> they cannot see the button label. And even though it's bright green and yeah, let's just assume that the only bright green thing on the page is probably the add to cart. You don't want that to be an assumption. You want it to be really clear. If you want to keep it green, I would just update it to black. Um, I didn't test what the number is, but I'm just going to send it to you right now, Rava, so you can see the difference. Um, but like the color contrast of black on that green is, yeah, 6X um, accessibility. And, you know, is that a huge thing? No, but it will affect conversion depending on your amount of traffic. Yeah, amazing. All right, next up, amazing. Hold on, I lost my place here. Da, 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 da. This is great, guys. This is so, so fun. I love it, love it, love it. Um, where are we at? Right Society, no, not yet. Right. Oh my gosh, there's so many amazing sites, how fun. Uh, restorative sleep, no, nope. lightning, organic, almost free, there. Free right, get Sorry. free right. Free right. Amazing, thank you. Logan, you go, because I want to I want to do Noma or Numa. Okay, cool. All, All right. right, you're up, Logan. <clears throat> Exit out of that pop-up, please. Yep. All right, cozy up with a good book, yours. Okay, um, great. You got to scroll down a little bit. Shop Traveler. Hmm. Oh, interesting. It's like a typewriter or a computer just for writing. Okay. Huh. Um, okay. Keep scrolling a little bit. It's a great one. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Here's my feedback. Um, number one at the very top. I always like creative headlines like it's fun, um, but I love either sub headlines or taglines that tell me exactly what you're selling. So, um, I, this feels like a new category of sorts. Like I have a laptop, right? So why couldn't I use my laptop? So the first question, like the first thing I would want to address is this is what it is. We have made a device specifically to help you write number on the below that below, like maybe the first couple products would be like a benefits tree of sorts. Like, why would I need this? Maybe it's helpful on the eyes. Maybe it's like, there's some sort of, um, customer feedback that said that like having a dedicated device just for writing uh, will help you actually get your goals met or something. So um, yeah, there's something right there. Yeah. I just feel like I would like a few things at the top there to kind of like ease me in to understand, well, I have a laptop. Why would I need this extra thing to write a book? Um, and how does it help me achieve that goal? If that's what I'm interested in. So that's what I got. Amazing. Yeah. Sean. Yeah. All of that. I agree with. Um, I think, on the, on the headline front, definitely agree with that. I, I'm totally all on board with like using marketing tags or, or anything that like, you know, cozy up with a good book yours. Like I love the intention there. Um, and the image tells a bit of a story, but it's just not crystal clear. One tip that I mm -hmm. always tell my customers is like, don't overthink it. I, mo for the most part, like clockwork, it never fails. I just send the customer to their own Instagram page and say, copy your profile. And I bet you, if we go to free rights, Instagram. They probably have like a tag. I hope I'm not wrong here. <laughs> um, welcome to free write distraction. Here we go. Distraction free drafting tools to get in the writing flow. Like that is a perfect headline. It tells me what you make and why it's great. Right. It's distraction free. It's a typing tool or a writing tool and it helps get you in the flow. You've got three things in a seven, eight word sentence. That's really communicative. Um, so I would just update it to that. Um, I think the other thing I would test is that button label. I, it's great that you have like these branded names for each device, but no one on the planet aside from your team knows what the hell those mean. So that button should not be shop traveler. You should probably have a button that says shop. Uh, what's the, what's the simplest way to define the device portable shop, portable typewriter. I know that you're, you're probably like, Oh, shaking your head, but like, Something like that that's <laughs> super communicative, shop portable typewriter, shop portable drafting tools, whatever. Um, 
and again, don't assume they know that that one in the image is not, is not the only one you sell. So maybe this is shop the traveler or shop this, shop this one, and then shop all portable drafting tools or shop all drafting tools. Um, I think those button labels can be just as powerful as a headline. If you're crystal clear in them, you, people don't need the headline, right? They can look at that button and know what they're going to click through to versus if I come here and I skip that headline and I see shop traveler, I'm lost in multiple ways and I'm probably not clicking through. That's amazing. Um, before we move on to the next site, uh, Sean, do you have any preferences for uh, A-B testing tools? Are you a Google optimized guy? What, what do you prefer? when Yeah, you most of the, testing? we're actually, I've been saying this for I think six months. So anyone that's heard it before, I apologize, but we're working on a how to start split testing guide. Um, and it's, and it's around Google optimized. Um, there's a lot of tools out there, but when it comes to some of the more complex ones, you just, it's, it's hard to do on your own. So um, that's what we recommend. And hopefully within the next few weeks here, you guys will be able to download one from our site for free, um, a little guide. And uh, audit.co, correct? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Amazing. Uh, okay, big fella, you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. I think okay. uh, Rob go. probably knows I wanted this one. But <laughs> it's I, was, I, was work, I was working on my own energy drink like this that I pulled the plug on, but separate story. So <laughs> uh, some of the things that stand out to me, if you click on the fourth image, you, you start showing what actually like makes it healthy and actually what makes it unique. Um, and so I think there are a lot of like organic sport energy drinks out there i would capitalize more on what's making it unique here and really speaking to that audience i think organic is great um obviously you talk a lot about the benefits i think it's good to talk about more of the ingredients it takes a little bit more legwork to get to that point um just yeah knowing this consumer and then i think honestly that that's probably the the biggest thing you guys do a great job at like selecting your plan and knowing i think a lot of people know buying canned goods can be or heavier items can be a lot to ship so i think you guys do a great job in your plan just like letting them know what the upfront costs are obviously you have the banner going at the top so i think for me the biggest thing missing is just like the ingredients that make this drink unique and different from the competitors so on a quick question that goes back to a point sean made earlier i'm a sucker for wanting to know the math right out of the gate with these types of products do you think it's a huge benefit of showing how many, how much it costs per can? Cause all I ever do is, is like compare it to what I'm already, my baseline is how much does yeah. it cost compared to a Red Bull? Right. Or 100%. Yeah, really I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I for sure would. Yeah. I don't think there's any, um, there's no, like, that's a perfect answer and it'll work for conversion, but I, it's a definitely something I would have brought up and something you should test is like showing the total price or the price per can or both. That's like the ABC test I would run right there. A lot of people, when you see, when you're looking at subscriptions, they'll just show the price per month when you're paying annually. And then when you get to check out, it's like hundred bucks a month and you get to check out it's grand. <laughs> yeah. In some cases that works, some cases it doesn't, but it's definitely worth testing. Um, I actually had a call last week with the founder of this, Jared. So I, but we only went through the homepage. So this is perfect. Um, I think one of the things I would test here is in those drop downs. If you click the bundle and save uh, drop down there, Raba. So the second one, yeah. So in here, like especially on desktop, and you probably will on mobile have enough space, but like just don't make people, again, you're making them think too much. You're saying, okay, well, the 12 pack I look up is $34.99. If I do 24, okay, that's going to be 70 minus 5%. Like, <laughs> Why, why make them think just sh you have white space for days on the right side of this, show the price, show the price per can show the difference between all three. Otherwise they're going to have to click through all three to see the price change. You're adding three unnecessary clicks um, for a user. And that's just, again, it, it's pretty consistent that the more clicks you're forcing them to do before the add to cart, the lower your conversion is dropping. Um, one not very popular change that we're always recommending to test is just test removing uh, the quantity selector. The reason it's even more important here is you're dealing with multiple quantities, right? So you've got 
12 pack and then one of them or 12 pack and two of them. And then as you bundle, you get more. So like, again, it's stupid, but like they're doing more math. Now it's seven twenty four packs. Like just remove it. And you've already got a quantity selector technically in the bundle and save drop down, right? 12, 24, 36. That's a quantity selector. Do they need another one? Maybe have it in the cart, use it as an option. But for me, unless you're doing an insane savings from them adding the multiples on quantity in this case, probably unnecessary. If a ton of your wholesale traffic is being sent to this PDP to order their thousand cans for the you know event they're holding, that's a little different, but I doubt that's the case. Yeah, and I also think to uh, your point, Sean, as well, fantastic feedback. Um, you could also, in the quantity selector, if you are trying to sell more, that can be in kind of like a uh, upsell flow when you do get to check out like, oh, hey, do you want to save X amount of dollars? Throw another 12 pack in there or something like that because you've already made the purchase in your mind and you can either go through with that purchase or just say no. It's a really easy thing versus right here. I haven't made the purchase yet and there's just a lot of cognitive load going on with what packs do I need? How many do I need? Do I need to subscribe and save? Do I just buy one? What flavor do I get? Like, there's just people buy off a no regret strategy and they'll much rather make no choice than a bad choice. Totally. And it, it, it's, it's so stupid, but like it, it all comes back to traditional retail. Like when you think of the best stores I can think of, sadly, that, that do this like, like surgically is kind of like winners, TJ Maxx, these stores where it's like, yep. if those gauntlets of 10 to $20 items on your way to the till, if all that shit, was next to the stuff you were buying out in the store, you would buy none of it. <laughs> but the second yep. that it's later in your purchase flow, right? You've decided you've already gotten getting the shirt or whatever the hell you're buying. And you've, you've committed to that mentally. You've spent that money. So now it's reset, right? And you're like, okay, well, what's 10 bucks? If it was out there, you wouldn't buy any of it. But they take you through that gauntlet. And it's very similar to what Rob is saying here. Like, you've got to figure out what is that shit at, in the end of that retail experience that you're handing them at the till to be like, are you sure you don't want this? This is a good little discount. Like you got to figure out what is that? It might be extra quantity. It might be an upsell of a second drink, whatever it is, but you constantly got to be testing that stuff. Don't, don't just assume like, Oh, well we have other stuff. Let's upsell. It's like maybe, but it's probably best to be selling something cheaper or of the same thing at a discount, right? Anything that's creating savings that that's where you're going to win on those upsells. Yeah. I love it. I think we have time for maybe one or two more Colin and Matt, thank you so much for those submissions. That, that's beautiful branding as well. That little infinity for the double O's is slick. Okay, uh, Lightning Sports. Oh, this is Chris. This is the Mead Boys. Yeah, I love this stuff. Okay, uh, who's up? LB or Sonder? Let Sonder go again. Go for it, bud. Okay, back to back. Let's go, Sonder. All right. I'm honest. Ugh, okay. I think I'm getting it now. It took me a second, honestly, to get what was going on, if they were selling or doing the training or what was going on here. Yeah, there's so, a mix, isn't there? Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, so maybe go back. Can you go back up to the page? Yep. So I, I, didn't, I didn't understand if they were the ones that, like, created spike ball yeah. or what was going on so, here. So now I'm, I'm getting... Same. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're they're doing a lot of the training behind it, but you can also buy the games. So I, I think, first of all, yeah, I think just being clear on what the the offer is is, I think, a very important thing here. Um, you know, now I can see that the games and the deals here. So yeah, I would say that's that's like my off the cuff um, coming out of the gate, confused now, realizing if I'm coming from a Facebook where there's more education going on, then this could completely make sense. So. You know, back to Sean's point of your acquisition mix, I think has a, you know, a big thing with your homepage, but yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, Sean. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try and go quick here. Cause I have a couple, um, I don't have time to run it through the checker, but black on purple, definitely not working from a color contrast standpoint. It's probably super low. Um, definitely test it with that link that I sent earlier. If you go right here and just type in the uh, hex codes for the two colors, black is zero, 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 if that helps. I don't know what your purple is, but I'm sure you know. Um, at the top in the navigation, if you go up, Robert, to the desktop uh, navigation, 
So one thing I'll mention here is you're assuming when people land here that they understand what these brands are. So if I go to all brands and I see this drop down, I don't know what Hiko sticks are, crazy catch, cross net soccer. I feel like I could probably figure it out. Spike ball, I've never played it, but I'm familiar with, but maybe they don't know. None of these things are common. So visualizing them here is super critical. You're like this, mm-hmm. this drop down is your very first drop down because home pages should not be up there, by the way. But it's your first link of like, here's some products. You're assuming that every user that comes to the site knows what those things are. And if they don't, they're going to have to click through each one to understand. And again, the more clicks you're forcing them to do that are unnecessary to conversion, the more your conversion is dropping. So all that said, long story short, these should be visualized in some way, especially on desktop um, because they just are, it's not super clear. Um, I think the, the kind of triggering, like the gallery in that header image, I don't mind it, um, but it it might be moving a little bit fast. It almost kind of like jogs you um, and you're almost not understanding it fast enough. Um, So I would, I would test some other images there. I I love this button label. I will say that like shop all training aids, um, super clear, super to the point. Again, like we said on the last slide, if they skipped everything else, they see that button and they know what they're clicking through to and they know what you do. So that's, that's a huge win. Um, sorry, I'm just scrolling down on my and see other emails I can point out quickly. Um, yeah, this definitely doesn't have the contrast you need. And this is the same black on purple, especially when you lose the weight in terms of yeah. that body text. That's a, that's a challenge to read. So this is all aids to help with these sports. You're not buying these actual sports. Am I correct in that? Like yeah, I, not that's buying... kind of, I think, the, the, the challenge for me, too. Like, I don't know if this is an actual aggregator or if it's actually the brand. Like, like it's, it, that's a bit confusing to me where um, it, would, it would definitely affect my confidence in shopping because I think when you are an aggregator, you need to, like, be really uh, – explicit like these aren't my products i'm just aggregating them to then sell them and send them out um or i am like this is my brand and lightning sports is the the brand that is selling these things so i think that for me was a big challenge in terms of understanding who i'm giving my money to i um for what it's worth uh since i like sports ball (laughs) um i my feedback would be at the top like if i if i'm coming here and i have any interest in this this website it would be for a specific sport. So my feedback would actually be to try to lead with by sport. Um, maybe you do the top sports in your header, or maybe you create some sort of like tile where I can choose soccer, baseball, whatever it may be, cricket, because my child or myself plays a specific sport that I want them or they want to get better at. And so I'm not, I don't want to go look at all training aids because I don't care about cricket if I only play soccer. So I, I wonder right. if that would lead to a higher conversion rate for I, some customers if you guided them in the right direction. Yeah, and it's a good point. And I think the other thing to consider here is that um, there may be, and, and mostly again, because these training tools and some of the names aren't super clear, it might be beneficial to instead of, you know, let's say we just remove that home link from the navigation just from a structural standpoint, replace that yeah. with like shop by benefit right? So like Mm. hand-eye coordination, uh, like whatever the different benefits are of these training aids, because like, you know, I used to, I played hockey for 20 years, every pregame we're playing hacky sack or soccer, kicking it around before and you're warming up. That's a different sport, but it's getting me ready or warming up your legs for anything. And so shopping by benefit is a lot easier to understand for anyone versus shopping by sport. And especially because these sports have different names and then there are training tools for sports that people are more familiar with there. There's just a lot of communication issues in that. And I feel like shopping by a benefit, like hand-eye coordination that anyone can understand if they play sports might be an easier path to purchase. Hmm. Yeah. I love that. Uh, My Uber is running late. So let's sneak one more in and then hopefully I make my flight. Uh, Thank you for putting that in Kate. That was really, really awesome. Okay, we'll close on.
Kai's Herbal Gummies. Amazing. All right, let me share the screen. Dun, 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 dun. By doing, doing three in a row downtown, or are you going to take this one? <laughs> Depends on what it is. I'm just kidding. I'll do it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Logan. All right. Um, 15%. All right, can you excite that real quick for me? Yep. That's All right, beautiful. Cool. Uh, restorative sleep. Great. Get more out of your sleep with powerful blend of full spectrum herbal extracts. Great. Okay. Scroll down a little bit. What customers are saying. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, all right, let's just, since we have limited time, let's start at the top. Uh, for okay. me, since I'm coming into this, pretty cold. Let's just pretend I'm a cold user coming into this. Um, yep. I like the restorative sleep. Like I would love more sleep and better sleep. Right. Um, the one thing I'm not sure right out of the gate is, is I see now that it's 135 gummies. At first I didn't know what I was buying. Am I buying powder that I mix with, with like water? Right. What yeah, is this exactly? Um, and so like one thing that I think would get me over the hump here is like, it's restorative sleep. It's like, tell me how much I'm going to improve my sleep. And then tell me like what my new routine is. is. Is it just one gummy a day? Like this will last you four weeks or something. So like that would be beneficial for me out of the gate to get me to go over the hump and go to the next uh, area of like discovery is that I just want to know what do I got to do? What am I going to get out of it? And then how long is this uh, big pack here going to last me? Um, that would be what I care about. Amazing. Yeah, Sean, I think. I think all of that makes sense. I think one way to, um, like, even though you say gummies there, I, I tend to agree with Logan, could be as simple as just you have some great renderings or images of the product there. Like in front of each bag, just sprinkle one or two of each. So you see the color of the gummy in front of it. It's just that visual mm -hmm. cue is instant. Um, and then um, the other thing I would note is it's not super clear to, to Logan's point. It's a three herb formula. Does that mean it's a three-step formula? So my major question here is like, okay, I've got 135 gummies. Again, going back to math, I can kind of do the math that in a 30-day guarantee, 135 gummies, that's about whatever it is, four a day, um, four point something a day. So like, yep. am I taking one of each of these a day? Is it one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night? Like, I'm not saying get into every detail of how this works and how it functions, but the more crystal clear they can understand this, the better you're not showing one pack and some gummies in front of it, right? And then saying, this is for restorative sleep, 30 day. Like that's really simple. You're showing three pouches, three containers, which I'm guessing are containers to hold them in, not six different packs of things, right? Which again is unclear. Right. Um, yep. So I'm not saying like over communicate and add a bunch of paragraphs of text here, but just think through the process of like how this is used, and is that communicated properly? Um, I think that could be done a little bit better in these bullet points. It might mean adding two. Um, so there's six, but I think that could be one thing that would be really beneficial here is just better understanding how it's used, whether it's in steps or you're just picking a flavor every day because you like it. Um, I think that's an, a, a big one. Um, scrolling down here, sorry, just looking. You kind of hit, hit it like, pretty clean at the start with what it is um, once you fix those things. So I think you're going to get a lot of action. You probably already do on that buy now button, um, which is a really unique purchase experience, by the way, if you click through to it, Raba, um, for anyone that didn't yet. Um, oh, that's stunning. That's legit. I would love to know how, that, how that's working versus a traditional kind of checkout because it's almost like a two-step PDP. Um, and in this stage, you give a lot of that info I'm talking about. Um, so like free reusable starter, like those reusable tins, that would be great to know on the lander, even if it's a little sticker over the tins, because point. it's not clear. It kind of looks like three bags and three tins. So six yep. packages, which you need to be more clear about, I think on that landing part. Amazing. Um, I have to jet guys, the Uber is here, but uh, Logan and Sandra, will you sign us off? And then uh, I'll talk with Sean, everybody, and then we'll see if we can't do something to get a uh, free audit for you guys or at least some sort of discount. And then if you guys don't have a pixel 
and you have the resources to buy a Pixel, buy one this month and you'll get entered into a raffle to win a free audit. I think the one we got is like around $1,600 MSRP. So it's, it's not nothing. And it's really, really cool. So amazing. Thank you, beautiful humans. Logan, Sonder, uh, Thanks, you guys are the best. Sean, you're amazing. Um, will you guys, uh, Logan and Sonder, sign everybody off and then uh, let Sean plug his stuff and then we'll see you guys on the flip. Thanks again, everybody that put in their websites and stuff. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of them. We'll, we'll bring Sean back on this. This seemed like a big hit and it was really fun. I learned a lot and I hope you guys did too. Um, okay, we'll see everybody later. Safe travels. See you, Rava. Um, all right, guys. So Sean, first and foremost, Thanks a ton for being on this. This was great. I think um, a huge benefit to the folks who joined. Um, so thank you so much for extending your time. Um, again, for everybody, I want to make sure Sean has an op opportunity here to plug what we're going to win and then kind of what audit does in general, like what kind of service you're actually going to be signing up for if you don't win. Um, Cause I think everybody could benefit by, by going through. So Sean, uh, give us a little bit of information about, about audit and how they can get involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so anyone that's not familiar, we do <clears throat> kind of UX teardowns is the simplest way to, to put it. Um, we call it brand for CRO, which is essentially just we're using a lot of our background in product design to help clean up user experiences and remove friction. A lot of the stuff that I was talking about um, in those live teardowns. Um, so with the partnership with Triple Whale, we're giving away 10, uh, what we call our quick win 10 packs. So in a full audit report, we actually tear down the whole site and redesign pretty much end to end the pages, um, your primary pages in the quick win 10 pack. We basically go through the whole site and we pick out the 10 most important things that need to change. Um, they may be really simple. They may be really complex, but it's kind of based on our, <clears throat> based on our professional experience and our background with audit. Um, the 10 things that are kind of needing updates the most on your site. Um, and then you get kind of full redesigns of those sections and the rationale behind those. Um, so you can obviously uh, win one through Triple Whale. They're available on our site if you want one sooner. Um, anyone that didn't get their uh, site view review today, um, please just head to the site. If you go to the site, um, we do one free quick win. Um, if you want to try it free. Nice. That's right audit, here. so like O-D-D-I-T.co. There it is. So it's yeah. in the chat for anybody yeah, who needs it. If anybody wants to try out the free one, um, it, it's a... It's, it's been a really big success and, and uh, helping customers kind of understand what we do. So uh, if you want to test it out, please, by all means, uh, go ahead. And uh, if you guys, you can also go on the site and book a call if you want to chat with us about your site and whether or not it's worth it for you. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks everyone for submitting their sites and I hope it was, uh, I hope it was helpful. Yeah, man. Thanks so much. So um, yeah, make sure you sign up for a pixel to be entered. Uh, of course, you get the benefits of the Pixel too. <laughs> and then next week, you're going to get a free rules engine for Facebook included with your Pixel purchase. So that's really great. Um, so yeah, everybody go ahead and, and do that if you haven't already. Um, Sondra, anything on your end that's going on? Marketing we need to let everybody know about? Um, no, not really. I mean, we're working on more and more educational content. I'm still meeting with customers every day. So if you want to talk marketing strategy, look at your data, identify some wins, book some time with me. Um, we'll also be sending out an email probably tomorrow um, to book some more time with me. So how do they go um, about doing that, uh, Sonder? Um, if you do want to book some time with me, just email me at sonder at triplewell.com and I'll, I'll send you my link and get you on the calendar. So seems like a great time of year to be uh, redoing your site and your strategy. So Get kicked off for January, right? New year, new you. Is that how you do it? Exactly. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for being here. Sonder, it's been great as usual. Sean, great to meet you. Great to have you on. Um, and anybody who has questions after this, tweet at us, email us, whatever you can. And we'll make sure that you're squared away. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.